What's up, everybody? Matt Gajeski here, back again with the Osmo team, talking some college football DFS picks ahead of the Thursday night showdown, Virginia taking on Miami. Before we get started, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when all this goes live. And of course, we will be taking you behind the glass, showing you some tools we have at Osmo for college football. We'll have projections, ownership projections, slate write-ups, everything you need but without further ado, let's dive into the matchup tonight. Virginia taking on Miami. This is our data usage tool behind the glass where you can see how these players are being used to start the year. But we are going to start on the Virginia side. Overall, this game has a six-point spread in favor of Miami. Virginia is dealing with some injuries, as we'll talk about, but total 63 points. So this is one we certainly want to be isolating skill position players in this matchup. Overall, Virginia has been very giving to opposing offenses. They're allowing over 235 yards to opposing SBF, FBS teams. Excuse me. Miami has been very giving through the air, allowing nearly 270 to opposing FBS teams, which bodes well for Virginia's pass game, which is led by Brennan Armstrong. Was a Heisman contender. Now maybe with the two losses Virginia suffered, he's fallen out of favor a little bit here, but he's still extremely active, a strong dual threat, 48 rushing yards this year. And he's already averaging an absurd number of passing yards, 422 per game on nearly 45 attempts. This is one of the highest passing volume, fastest offenses in the country. And even as underdogs here, Armstrong is going to be a very strong play in the captain spot. He's easily eclipsed 300 yards in every game this year, making him just overall an amazing play. Somebody you should consider in the flex, in the captain across the board. At running back, Wayne Talapapa is back. Apparently, he missed last week's game with a concussion, but he practiced in full already this week. That should put him into a timeshare with Mike Collins, Devin Darrington, even Ronnie Walker to a degree is going to factor into this backfield. But it is mostly going to be Talapapa with Mike Collins peeing a change of pace. Again, very pass heavy offense. There's only been one instance of a ball carrier even hitting 10 carries in this offense. And the leading rusher is actually Armstrong. Behind him, Devin Darrington has 83 yards. Nobody's averaging over 22 per game. So it's kind of a spot to avoid outside of GPPs at receiver. This is certainly a place we want to consider for Virginia. Devontae or er, Dontavian Wicks has been elite. He's averaging 115 yards per game on 8.5 targets. Very strong option, but very expensive. Billy Kemp is more of your discount option here. Only 266 yards in the year, which is behind Wicks, who has 460. So nearly a 200 yard difference. But targets are very similar. Kemp, 8.3 per game to Wicks, 8.5. Wicks just used a little more downfield than Kemp, who's more of a near the line of scrimmage type player. And then from there, wide receiver three is Rashawn Henry, who has been very involved. He's seen target counts of nine and 10 in the last two games, averaging seven per game. He is 224 yards, a very strong option there. A couple of injury notes to note for Virginia. You have Keaton Thompson, former quarterback, Gadget player this year, he already has 23 targets, 232 yards, and he is involved in the run game with 12 carries. He's playing with a cast on his hand. He played in last week's game, but he only saw three targets and he didn't carry the ball at all. So he did see a reduced role. And that was even reflected in snap counts and routes run. Just hard to play with a cast on your hand. I'm not sure how they're going to make use of him, but he's still going to play. Makes him a very dicey GPP option. Then Jelani Woods, the tight end. He was in a walking boot and he's more likely to just purely sit out of this game. Something to watch again, wide receivers aren't designated with the tight end labels. Even if they are playing tight end, Jelani Woods is a tight end for this team. He's third on the team in receiving yards with 247, 24 targets overall. His absence would be notable. Grant Mish is the backup tight end. He did play an elevated snap role in their last game. Saw three targets. He only has 12 yards, but he's the stone minimum. He's somebody to watch. And then Virginia will not hesitate to run four wide receivers out there. So perhaps they just move to more four wide with a combination of Keats and Thompson. And we also saw way down in price. Another player in Malachi Fields pop up for two targets and then four targets in the last game. Only 43 yards. But Malachi Fields and Grant Mish are min price options that you can consider because of injuries. Again, watch the status of Jelani Woods. On Miami, we have Derek King expected to play he's been practicing this week dealing with a shoulder injury missed their most recent contest but he's been very good when out there seems fully recovered from the acl already 96 rushing yards on the year and some of that depressed not only by the game against alabama but he missed 
not only their last game, but part of the Michigan State game as well. He's been averaging 41 attempts per game, 255.7 yards. So D.R. King firmly in play, particularly on FanDuel. And in the run game, we have lost a couple players. It looks like Cameron Harris is still going to be the lead back here. But overall, we don't have Donald Chaney anymore. He's out with an injury. Jalen Knighton does come back from his four-game suspension. Again, of course, he hasn't carried the ball suspended. But he did play a change of pace role last year. So Jalen Knighton is notable. I don't think we see an elevated carry share at all for Cameron Harris. He even split with Cody Brown. And again, Cody Brown saw an elevated workload in their last game because there was no there was no Donald Chaney. And again, their matchup wasn't exactly difficult either. So I think you'll still see Cameron leading the way, but Cody Brown, Jalen Knight, and mixing in. All middling plays at best. On FanDuel, Cameron Harris is attractive. His price is just very cheap. In the receiving game, Oklahoma transfer Charleston Rambo has been the alpha. He's averaging 72 yards per game on 8.8 targets, bolstered by a massive 17 target game. But Rambo is the dude. He's going to play outside. Mike Harley is a lower upside option. He plays purely in the slot, but his targets are a bit depressed after he only played half of their week one game. Mike Harley should be right there with Charleston Rambo. Those are the top two options. And then Keyshawn Smith has been the wide receiver three. Seldom used, but on the field often. Smith has 17 targets. He's averaging 5.7 per game. That is going to come down to, excuse me, he's averaging 4.3 per game, 5.7 in their in their last three. He's going to split time increasingly with players like Xavier Estrepo, Romella Brinson, D. Wiggins. But I, ultimately, those are going to be pure punt plays. I would rather play the punt plays on the Virginia side given their injury situation. But Restrepo, Brinson, Wiggins are all factors to some degree. Tight end for this team is going to be Will Mallory. He has not been targeted as often either. Just 12 targets on the year for him. So definitely prioritizing Rambo in Harley if I can get there. Helton is, or yeah, Keyshawn Smith, excuse me. Keyshawn Smith is more of that third option to look for in the receiving game. But overall, still a preference to Virginia, even with the six-point spread going in Miami's favor, trying to get King, trying to get some of the receivers like Harley, maybe Cameron Harris on FanDuel. But that is the slate. Thank you guys for watching. That will do it for us today. We'll be back tomorrow with more DFS breakdowns. Let me know your favorite play in the comment section. Otherwise, I'm Matt Gajeski on Twitter at Matt underscore Gajeski. We will see you guys again next time.